that my grandmother was a minister, a preacher, my dad's mom, I mean, rather, my, my mom's mom, my mother's mom, Harriet, who was a uh, minister of, of uh, science of mind. She was a healer. And she had the whole mind over matter thing figured out. Well, penetrated. I guess you don't figure it out. She had penetrated the seemingly impenetrable realm. And she found that the decade of the 60s very encouraging. Because as she put it to me, so many young people are leaving the church and going back to God. And she had been told when she was 12 years old that due to a missing left hip socket and a paralyzed left leg, that she would, quote, never be able to stand alone, much less walk, unquote. Well, my grandmother gave up on doctors then and there, and by the age of 24, she was a professional dancer. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, stubborn? Well, no, even... Even then, at that age, she was uh, into scripture and, it, and its practical application. Right? It is not I, it is the Father in heaven who doeth the work. Which is mysterious, seems fable-like. You know, what Huckleberry Finn would call a stretcher. And, until we recall you know, the, the Master's greatest pronouncement, the kingdom of heaven is within you. As, as my, uh, my grandmother used to say to me, God can only do for you what he can do through you. So, um, and she, she married. She was the first person in our whole family to ever get divorced. So I really am following in her footsteps. Um, <laughs> but she married a wonderful guy named Don Up. UPP, Don Up. He was the head cashier, uh, paymaster at Paramount Pictures for 40 years. He used to hand out the, the, you know, Marlon Brando's paycheck to him every week, Clark Gable's paycheck. And uh, a great guy, Don Up. So her name became Harriet Up. It was a great name for a preacher. <laughs> great name for a minister. I used to uh, stand in front of her bookshelves. She had these, these great bookshelves. And I w as a little boy, I would just stand in front. Yeah, I could just feel the energy coming off of these, these books. It was like standing in front of a, 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 an ocean, a roaring ocean. And she would walk by and drop little bits of wisdom on me, like the, the aforementioned, God can only do for you what he can do through you. Or her, her favorite Walt Whitman quote, which is, henceforth, I ask not good fortune, I myself am good fortune. She loved that one. My dad's mom, on the other hand, was a trash-talking, bourbon-swilling jazz hound from Tennessee. And she used to... I, I would sit on her, on her knee. As the old saying goes, I with my bottle, she with hers. And uh, she would tell me, sing, sing me songs, little folk songs, and teach them to me, or, or teach me jokes. Uh, 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 what, what are the three main parts of the stove? Lifter, leg, and poker. This, yeah, this is my grandmother teaching me when I was, you know, this high. Uh, so, and she loved jazz. She always wanted to take me down to New Orleans to the bistros. But, you know, the, that's what she called them, the bistros, the, the jazz clubs. And we would... Uh, We'd look at the record albums and, and take out the, the inner sleeves, those paper sleeves that had printed on them all the other albums you could buy. This is when, you know, media came in, in packages that you could read. Uh, 
And she and she'd say, "Who's that?" And I'd say, "Oh, that's uh, that's Buddy Rich." She'd say, "Very good." And and who's that? Uh, Dizzy Gillespie. Very good. Yeah. So we we got along great. And her favorite singer was Hoagy Carmichael. 